In this video of ink pot, we're going to derive the AD curve. We should we should have already done our fiscal and monetary policy along with the crowding out and transmission effect so far. We're going to be doing the derivation of the AD curve. Once we derive the AD curve, we're going to use this AD curve along with AS curve to understand a few basic concepts before we formally derive the AS curve in the next unit. So how, what happens when P falls? Till now, so far, whatever analysis we have done, we've always taken P to be constant. But now we are trying to understand what happens when P falls. We draw the AD curve as a combination of P and Y. So we start our chain with a P falls. When P falls, M by P rises. When M by P rises, the increase in M by P is the same as P falling. Rate of interest falls. Because bank ke paas zada paise aage na, the bank has more real money. That's why they will reduce the rate of interest. They want to push the money out. When the rate of interest falls, investment increases and therefore Y increases. So the relationship between P and Y is inverse, which is why our AD curve is downward sloping. So this is our AD curve. It shows that when P is falling, Y is increasing. When P falls, we move outward and AD curve comes out to be downward sloping. Let's understand the shift of the curve. What is the gap between 1 and Two, what is the magnitude of the shift? At one, at one, the equation is k by naught minus h i naught is equal to m by p, m by m by p naught. Now at two, our y is different, our i is same, and our p is different, right? So if you subtract the two, you get k change in y is equal to change in m by p. K change in y is equal to change in m by p. So change in y is nothing but 1 by k change in m by p. So that is why this is the magnitude of the shift. What is the magnitude of the shift? The magnitude of the shift is 1 by k change in m by p. Right? What determines the slope of AD curve? The slope of AD curve, we don't want to understand the exact slope of AD curve. We are only interested in figuring, figuring out what is the slope of AD curve as in what makes the AD curve flatter. So we are interested in a flat AD curve. We are interested in a flat AD curve. So we want to understand what parameters gives us this kind of an AD curve and what parameters gives us a this kind of AD curve. This curve is flat and this curve is steep. So we want to understand what makes the AD curve flat. To do that, we make the chain and the chain is the same as the one we started in the transmission effect. Similar to that. So when P falls, M by P rises by the same magnitude. When M by P rises, interest rate falls by 1 by H change in M by P. We studied this before. How do we get this? Which means investment rises by B change in I which leads to y increasing by alpha g change in i, right? This chain will help us understand why is b small, h, uh, b large, h small, k small and alpha g large. Let's start with b. Imagine two economies a and b. We want with the same p fall, y increase to be more. y increase agar hame zada chahiye to i, investment increase zada chahiye. Investment increase agar agar zada chahiye to imagine karo do economies hai. Just can the same P fall kara, same M by P rise kara, same interest rate fall kara, like in Doro countries ka B alag alag hai. So just country ka B small hai, uske and the investment increase be small hoga, just country ka B large hai, us country may investment increase be large hoga. Or jitna investment increase zada hoga, utna hi Y increase be zada hoga. So for a flat AD curve, I want B to be large, right? Similarly, H. Again, I want Y to be large, which means I want investment to be large. Again, imagine two economies, one with a small H, the other with a large H. Now, jitna P, P increase in both economies is same. Hai. Jitna H large, hoga, utna 1 by H small. Hoga. Jitna 1 by H small, hoga, utna hi rate of interest fall be small. Hoga. Lekin, I want the rate of interest to be large, because rate of interest jitna zada, jitna fall, karega, utna hi investment rise. Karega. Therefore, I want 1 by h to be large, which means h should be small. What about k? k is something that we did a little while back. k determines the magnitude of the shift. What is the magnitude of the shift? 
the magnitude of the shift is 1 by k change in m by p. So, jitna k hamara small hoga, utna hi 1 by k large hoga. Jitna k 1 by k large hoga, utna hi magnitude bhi large hoga. It will be small. And alpha g determines the y increase directly. So, a two two economies with the same increase in investment, the economy with a larger alpha g will give us a larger change in y. So that means our flatter AD curve is with a large V, small H, small K and large alpha G. Instead of remembering it, cramming it up, if you understand the chain and derive it each time, it's easier. But once you've done it a few times, you should have a strong enough intuition to actually get the answer right away in the exam. If that is not happening, then you have to remember this. You can't leave it on the chain later on because that will eat up a lot of your time in the exams. All right. So when B is large, that means we have a flat IS. We did this before. When H is small, that means you have a steep LM. Again, we've done this before. But again, if you don't remember it, now is a good time to go back to those videos and reiterate your points, you reiterate your concepts because the moment we move to ADAS, this all becomes really crucial. So please do revise the previous videos and do one of the tests or one of the a few of the numericals before moving on.